a perfect balance. In the 1960s, cosmology transitioned from a loose set of unconfirmed speculations into a hard science backed by observation. In this emerging field, cosmologists found a coincidence that couldn't be brushed off as mere luck, it demanded explanation. In 1948, Ralph Alpha and Robert Herman were the first to predict that if the Big Bang happened, space should be filled with a uniform radiation emanating from all directions in the sky, a primordial heat remaining from the earliest moments of the universe. At the time, there was no technology to detect this radiation. Alpha's and Herman's prediction soon fell into obscurity and was forgotten. Sixteen years later, the chairman of physics at Princeton, Robert Dick, rediscovered this prediction. With his colleagues Jim Peebles and David Wilkinson, they planned to build a device able to detect this radiation. They could thereby confirm or disprove the Big Bang. But as fate had it, they were beaten to the punch by two radio astronomers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson of Bell Labs. In 1964, Penzias and Wilson spent a frustrating year trying to isolate the source of a signal interfering with their observations, to no avail. A mutual friend suggested that they reach out to Robert Dick, who was a short drive away from their facility in Holmdel, New Jersey. Penzias and Wilson called Dick who was in his office with Peebles and Wilkinson. After hearing the details of this interference signal from the Bell Labs researchers, Dick turned to his colleagues and said, Well boys, we've been scooped. The Princeton team drove to the Bell Labs facility to hear the signal for themselves. The signal had all the right characteristics. Its temperature, distribution, consistency, directionality, and intensity, all matched perfectly with predictions of the Big Bang theory. They listened to a cosmic hum of radiation that had been traveling through space for billions of years, the universe had a beginning. It was one of the greatest scientific discoveries of the 20th century. It earned Penzias and Wilson the 1978 Nobel Prize in Physics. But this wasn't the end of the story. In 1969, Dick recognized an unsettling consequence of the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe, it is highly unstable. Had the density of the universe been slightly greater, the universe would have collapsed billions of years ago, long before life formed. Had the density been slightly less, the universe would have expanded too fast for galaxies and stars to form. It was as though the universe sat on a knife edge. Had it not been so balanced, it would have fallen to either side and we wouldn't be here. Why the universe's density is perfectly balanced is known as the flatness problem, since according to general relativity, a perfect balance implies that spatial curvature is zero, flat. Modern observations confirm space is flat to within the precision of our measurement abilities, within 1%. Due to the unstable nature of the balance, it implies that earlier, the balance was even greater. Calculations reveal that if the curvature is below 1% today, then one second after the Big Bang, it would have been 10 to the power of 15 times less. The situation is analogous to rolling a bowling ball down a lane so long that the ball could roll for billions of years. If we find the ball drifted less than 1% from center after rolling for billions of years, it suggests the ball must have been even closer to center when it started. Quote, if the rate of expansion one second after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand million million, it would have recollapsed before it reached its present size. On the other hand, if it had been greater by a part in a million, the universe would have expanded too rapidly for stars and planets to form. End quote. Stephen Hawking in a Brief History of Time, 1996 edition. It appears as though we are the winners of a cosmic lottery. Had there been just slightly more mass, then the universe would have collapsed billions of years ago. Had there been slightly less, there would be no galaxies, stars, planets or humans, there'd be no time for any structures to condense out of a rapidly expanding interstellar gas. 
Our universe is a Goldilocks universe where the density is just right.